So now that we talked about the different route types you guys can use, like get, post, put, the other get and the delete one, let's try and figure out what this controller actually does. First of all, you have to understand that this is uh, we're we actually passing in arguments to this function right here. So we're sending in all the arguments available into the find function inside the controller. So let's try and open the customer controller. Whoa, that looks simple. That's because the customer controller actually extends a controller which is the file that I started talking about in the lib here, in the library. So inside the lib folder there's actually a find, find one, find by id, create and update and remove. And guess what? Those are the exact ones that we just used inside the find, create, update, find by id and remove are pretty much the same one here that we just uh, used before, right? Find one, find by id, those we can start talking about which one we should use. But right now we are using find by ID right here. Good, so back to the controller, which is kind of the extension of all of the controllers from this guy and all of the controllers from this guy. So the movie controller is just a symbol as well. It just extends the controller. Now you can override stuff in here if you want to. I won't dive into that for these lessons because I want to use another even more powerful Yeoman framework, but I still want to show you guys this if you want to use it. Um, so let's have a look at the controller. So what it does is when we call, for instance, the route of get, it says dot find and passes in a list of all the arguments that it got from the router. And all those arguments are pretty much these. It's a request, a response, and a next to move on to the next guy who wants to use this inside the middleware stack. So just think of the next as I pass this on to whoever else want to use the information that I just used, right? If it's an error, we'll just pass the error on to the next guy in the queue and he can do whatever he wants with an error. So what do we do? Well, we use the facade to find with the request query. Okay, now it starts getting a bit complex here because the facade is also here. And let's have a look at the facade. Again, it just extends the model. Let's have a look at the model. Well, it's pretty much just a way for us to extend on the different commands that Mongoose provides for you. So if we want to do a find, we'll pass in a query and that query will then be executed, right? We did this in Mongoose, but we just didn't split it up in these different um, classes like he's doing here. But he's trying to make it more generic, easier to use, and that's why, I do it, why he's doing it. So it pretty much just means that we have this schema on its own, and then we have a facade that explains, if you want to do a find method, you'll do a schema.find and execute that command. If you want to do a find one, you'll do this, find by, you'll do this, remove, you'll do this, right? update you'll do this so he has moved all the different commands from the controller into another set called the facade for the schema if you want to do this or not that's up to you but it makes it very generic and very reusable as you can see here he just has a constructor with the facade you want to use and uh, when you create your controller right you just create it with a customer facade and then you know what controller the facade is built up with Okay, so again, when I do the route, I say send all the arcs, which is the request, the response, and the next parameter, send those to the controller find statement, and that's in here. But since we extend the controller, it's actually in here. And then we have the find statement, and all it does is it says get the facade and do the find request with the current query. And the facade says find is here, we'll just take the schema, do a plain find method in mongoose which will just get all the different uh, customers we want and then we'll of course limit the response with the query we send in that could be anything like uh, sort by order by um, only search by this name stuff like that no actually not sort in order i think we would, we would just focus on searching for specific information inside the query and then we will execute that command we would return here and if everything went well then we'll send the collection back Right, so we said we found everything with a 200 to the guy who uses this in Postman. But if something goes wrong, we'll send an error back. So let's just try and create a few customers here. Um, I'll just do a post a few times just to show you. Post, post, post. So I created three bills, doesn't matter. When I do a get request, I do a send here, it brings back three customers. Why? Let's just try and do this step by step again. Going to be kind of a long video, but just to show you. It hits the route of customer. Right? So that hits the customer router. The customer router says it's going to be a GET request and I'm going to pass in all the information 
from the guy who requests with me. He's going to call the controller called the customer controller's find function. Now the customer controller just extends the facade, uh, sorry, the controller up here. So that's going to hit the find method and that's going to say, give me the facade. The facade is the schema. It's actually the place where we can call the model information for a mongoose schema. So that means we can call update, find, delete, or remove all the different mongo or mongoose commands. We call the find command and then we execute it, returning some kind of collection of customers. We take that collections inside the router, sorry, inside the controller, we take that collection, we say then, meaning we, we use Bluebird to do a promise here saying when it's all done, take the collection and return it if no error occurs. If an error occurs, then catch the error and just send it to the next guy in the list. So that was kind of a big thing. I'll split it into two videos and we'll try and do it again with the post in the next video just to, just to show you once more the different steps that we go through to use the controller. See you next time.